Hello kids, today's story is Valley of the Giant Skeletons. See the big skeleton? Dear Mouse friends, welcome to the world of Geronimo Stilton. The Rodents Gazette Editorial Staff. Look, the rug is made out of cheese. Uh, and see this? And see the cups are made out of cheese. Look, that uh, statue is made out of cheese. She's wearing cheese. Look, that mouse is uh, riding a cheese mobile with a cheese helmet. Geronimo Stilton, Lady of the Giant Skeleton. My worst nightmare. It was late, very late. The new cat clock in my office let out 12 terrifying meows. I cringed. The clock was a present from my uh, obnoxious cousin, Trap. He loved to scare me, which is easy. You see, I'm a bit of a scaredy mouse. And, oops, I almost forgot to introduce myself. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I won the most popular newspaper in New Mouse City. It's called the Rodents Gazette. I also write adventure books. In fact, that's why I was still at the office. I was working on my latest novel. Too bad I couldn't think of anything to write. I stared at the pile of crumpled paper. Papers. In my waste basket. Whack! My mind was a total blank. The only adventures I could think of were ones I had already written about. Like the time I met a band of pirate cats. Or the time I went to the North Pole. Or the time I pesky little mouse named Bugsy, Wugsy, and I discovered a mummy. I looked out the window. It was so dark and spooky. Hmm. That gave me an idea. Maybe I could write a story about ghosts. I shivered as I began to write a story about ghosts. Chapter 1. It was midnight, the time when all good mice should be home. Snugged in their beds. But where was I? I was stuck in a creepy old castle. That's right, stuck. Someone or something had locked me inside. I raced up a long, dark staircase looking for a way out. At the top of the stairs, I found a small door. Slowly, I pulled the door open. Creak! What was behind the door? Who knows? I couldn't type another word that's because the lights in my office has suddenly gone out. A voice peered in the darkness. It shrieked, Geronimo! I 
was scared out of my fool. Who is it? I stammered. It is your worst nightmare, the voice called out. A minute later, the lights flickered back on. My cousin Trap stood in front of me. He was laughing so hard. <laughs> Tears rolled down his whiskers. You are such a fraidy mouse, Joe Mister. He snorted. He plopped down on a chair. He put his dirty paws up on my desk. Then he picked his snout. I groaned. Oh, why did my cousin have to be so disgusting? He really is my worst nightmare. Do you mind getting your paws off my desk? I grumbled. My cousin pretended not to hear me. Instead, he pulled out a large bag of cheese popcorn. Then he began to shovel. Uh, the popcorn uh, into his mouth like a starving rat. Sticking orange cheese dribbled down his mouth. It splattered all over my desk. I was livid. Do you mind? I shrieked. Can't you see? I'm trying to right here. You can't even write a shopping list. My cousin rolled his eyes. He pointed to the papers spilling out of my waste basket. Looks like you're not writing much, anyways. He smoked. What's the matter, Jerry Barry? Flesh out of ideas. Now I was. Really, fuming. For one thing, I hate it. It when my cousin calls me Jerry Barry. And another thing, I hate it when he's right. I was flesh out of ideas. I was even flesh out of stale ideas. My mind was a total blank. But I wasn't about to let Trap know that. With a squeak, I squeak. I began to type away like a madman. I'd show him I wasn't all washed up. I typed faster and faster. My paws practically flew over the keys. What was I writing about? My trip to the Costa Rican rainforest. My journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Well, not exactly. To be honest, I wasn't writing an adventure story at all. I was busy typing out a shopping list. I hadn't been to the shop. To the stop and squeak in a few days, and there was hardly a nibble left in my refrigerator. I was so busy thinking about food that I almost forgot about my cousin. Just then, I realized shopping list: cheese, milk, sugar, flour. He was. Standing over me, I tried to cover up my computer screen, but it was too late. What's this, Jimister? Cheese, milk, flour? You are not writing a new novel. You are writing a shopping list. <laughs> He squeaked with a smirk. I sighed. Okay, I admit it. I mumbled. My, I'm having. A little trouble coming up with ideas. My cousin snickered. Up,、uh, he poured 
a magnifying glass out of his back pocket. He held it up to his eyes, then pre pretended to peer deep in my ears. Anyone home? He squeaked. You are white, Jerrykins. It looks like your brain has completely skipped town. He laughed. So hard, a button popped off his shirt. I groaned. But before I could run out the door, Trap drew his paws around my shoulders. Don't worry about the old brain, Jeroni Mode. I've got just the core. You see, I've brought you a little present. A present that will leave you bursting with ideas, he said. That's when I noticed Chap had placed something on my desk. It was a very, very old looking piece of yellow paper. The paper was wrapped around a giant bone. How strange! A gigantic bone? Bailey of the giant skeleton. Gobby Desert, Mongolia. Bone Hole Peak. Bones Lake. Mita Torres River. Miss, my, Mystery Mountains. Vertebrae Grotto Tibia Tibia Hills Plans Plans of Secrets The Treasures Lies Here A Map of Mongolia Check this out, Jamisto! My cousin squeaked. Carefully, he slid the document off the bone. I was so intrigued, I didn't even mind, mind the name calling. The yellow paper was actually an old map. I picked up the magnifying glass. I peered at it closely. It was an old map of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, but there were odd names written on it. Valley of the Giant Skeletons, Bonnehole Peak, M Mystery Mountains, Metatarsus River. Vertebrate Grotto, Bones Lake, Plants of Secrets, Tibia Hills, Luck Cherrykins. I squeaked at my cousin. How do you know? This map is real, I asked. My mind filling with doubt. Trapped, Trap's eyes sparkled. I know it's real because I found it, he squeaked proudly. Then he lowered his voice mysteriously. I found it in a trunk in my house, yeah, he explained. It belonged to great, great, great uncle, Wally. Come on, I'll show you. We left the office and headed for Trap's house. Do you know where my cousin lives? It is a very un unique place. You see, he lives... In an old 
train car card, the or Orient Express. It belongs to our great 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 uncle Wally, also known as Wandering Wally. He lived in the one eighty and one eighteen hundred and was an explorer. He was always roaming around the world in search of mysterious treasure. Uncle Wally had turned the train car into a beautiful home. It has a comfortable living room, cozy dining area, and even a small breakfast bar. And of course, there is plenty of light in the train because of all the windows. In the sleeping compartment, there's an antiquity bed with a beautiful brass headboard and for guests. There's a small bunk bed that goes up or down with the pool of a lever. The bathroom is made of the finest, finest marble and the faucet is sold gold, solid gold. Orient Express. The Orient Express first began operating in uh, uh, one thousand eight hundred eighty-three. It was a first. A European train, the sleeping cars, and a Westmont car. Its luxurious couch carried the most famous people. Even today, one can ride in this legendary train, retracing the classic route. From Venice, Venice, Italy, so Istanbul, Turkey. House, bathroom, traps, bed, bunk, bed for guests. Kitchen, table, velvet sofa, breakfast bar, coffee maker. Uncle Wally Stilton's truck. When we got to his house, trap led me straight to the bedroom. <laughs> I tried not to notice the piles of dirty laundry, cobwebs, and three half-eaten cheese sandwiches on the floor. Did I mention my cousin is a total slob? This is where I found it, Trap squeaked. Peeking up one of the old sandwiches and shoveling it into his mouth about a month ago, I dropped a coin next to my bed. When I bent down to pick it up, I noticed there was a hidden button on the wooden 
platform. I push it and suddenly a secret compartment popped out. Inside it was a trunk. Trap showed me a big wooden. At the base of the bed, there was a secret button. I pushed it. <laughs> Suddenly, a secret compartment popped out. Inside, it was this trunk. <laughs> trunk. It was locked with a lock. Padlock stamped on the lock. Well, the initial, initial. initial WS. Trap fit a tiny key into the lock. Then he opened the trunk. I let out an excited, excited squeak. The trunk was filled with all the different things Uncle Wally had used on his adventures. There was an old pick, a lamp, and a flat dish for panning gold. <laughs> there was a compass he had used when he searched for treasure in the Gulf of Mexico. There was even a canteen he had carried when he crossed the Mouse Hawa Desert. There was a paddle he had used on the Amazon River. There was an old pair of skis he used when he when when he, he used when he went to the North Pole to and much much more pick to dig in the mine old lamp gold wash pan to sift for gold in the river, compass, Gulf of Mexico, spyglass, hat with a moss keto net, paddle, Amazon River, North Pole, wooden skis, mouth eating. Wool hat, moth eating wool hat, leather knapsack, chilled to bits. Trap reached deep into the trunk and pulled out a leather bound book. This is Uncle Wally's diary, he said. You won't believe all of the queer stuff. He did. Cheese niblets was he daring. He kind of reminds me of myself. Strong, fearless, incredibly handsome. Did I tell you my cousin is terribly considered? Too bad Uncle Wally had to lose his whiskers in such an awful way. He went on. I was into wigood. What do you mean, I asked. My cousin gnashed his teeth. Didn't you know Jerry Berry? Old Wally got his protrudes to bits by a crocodile in the Amazon River. He squeaked. I 
I began my trip and search of treasure in the valley of the giant skeleton in Mongolia. That's where I'll, I'll be soon if I don't first get eaten by a crocodile here and and am in Amazonia. Ha 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 ha. I gloped. I gloped. I was still thinking about Uncle Wally and the croc when Trapped waved the map in front of my snout. He pointed to a big X at the bottom of the map. You see this spot, Jerry Berry? This is where a treasure is hidden. And we're going to find it. Yep, you dare, Benjamin. And I are going to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. When we find the treasure, I'll be rich, rich, rich! I scratched my fur. But how do you know there's really a hidden treasure there in Mongolia? I asked. Chips map me on the head with the map. Of course there's a treasure there. It's right here in the dairy. Diary. It's what Uncle Wally was searching for before he got crunched into muddy wings. He insisted I cringed. I wished my cousin would stop talking about the quacks chewing up Uncle Wally. It was making me queasy. But I wasn't about to mention it. My cousin already thought I was a wimp. Well, all right, I'll come with you, I said. But I'm not doing it for the treasure. I don't care about money. I'd just like to bring a happy ending to Uncle Wally's last misadventure. Misadventure. Trap chuckled. Oh, dear mister, you are such a sap, he said with a smirk. Well, all right, you are such a sap. I want your money. A few minutes later, Trap called Dara and Benjamin. It didn't take long to convince them to join us on the trip. My sister, Dara, loves traveling traveling anywhere and everywhere. She is a real adventure mouse. She can climb the steepest mountain in no time flat. She never even gets out of breath. She loves bungee jumping, curry sailing, scrubber, diving and white water rafting. I guess you could say she's the total opposite of me. I get exhausted when I walk and chew gum at the same time. As for my nephew, Benjamin, he's the sweetest little mouse you'll ever met. He's smart and polite and always in a good mood. He loves to go on adventure, especially 
when you was truly come along. Yes, I'm proud to say that I am Benjamin's favorite uncle. See, I told you he was smart. After Trap talked to our family, he put his paws around my shoulders. Did I ever tell you that you are f- my favorite cousin? He gushed. Oh, oh. Now I knew something was up. My cousin is only nice to me when he wants something. What do you want to borrow this time? Trap? My golf c- clubs? My car? My Nimit Edition Cheese Manic Cheese Grattle? I asked. My cousin laughed in my face. Don't be ridiculous, Jeroni Mold. I don't want your silly old golf clubs. I want your money, twenty thousand dollars, to be exact. That to cover our expenses on the trip. He announced. I squeaked. I. Squealed. I ran around in circles, chasing my tail. But it, in the end, I agreed to give <laughs> Trap the money. What else could I do? We owe it to Uncle Roddy to find the treasure. All right. Thanks. I've got mail. That night, I couldn't sleep. I winked. We were leaving on our trip the next morning. I was a bundle of news for one thing. I hate traveling. Plus, I know next to nothing about Mongolia. When I got an idea, I decided... You call my friend Petunia Pretty Paws. Do you know Petunia? She's the most fascinating mouse. She's a TV reporter who loves who goes around the world. Reporting on the environment, the different ways to protect nature. She also, she's also beautiful. You may have guessed I have a huge crush on her. Too bad I turned to a stuttering fool when I talked to her. Two minutes later, I got Petuna, Petunia. On the phone. Hi, Geronimo. It's Petunia. I mean, hi, Petunia. It's Geronimo. I stammered. Then a blush. See what I mean? I told uh, Petunia about our trip. What do you know about Mongolia and the Gobi Desert? I ask. Petunia explained that it was the rainy season of Mongolia. She said we'd get hit with torrential rains. She also said that. The sun is fly, would fly awful in the desert, soaking rains, burning sun. I flew into panic. I wa- wasn't an adventure mouse. I liked air condi- conditioning, bubble baths, 
and my cozy bed at home. Oh, why have I agreed to go on such a horrible trip? But Petunia insisted that Mongolia was an amazing place. A few minutes later, the computer began humming. I've got mail! I exclaimed. It was an email from Petunia, all about Mongolia. The end of part one, kids. Please subscribe to my video. I hope you like it.